defence. Uh, Stephen, something you know a little bit about. What did you make of today's changes? Because, Steve, uh, we've heard Richard Miles talk about culture issues in defence. All these new appointments, does, can he now say, um, you know, he's made the changes he wants to and if there are still culture issues in a year, well, maybe it's his fault? Well, I think that Richard has correctly called out that there has been a culture of very poor procurement practice over a long period of time, that delivery of projects on time and on budget uh, hasn't been uh, anywhere near a, a reasonable standard. He wants a standard of excellence. I think uh, David Johnson has been part of the reviews that have been going on internally. He's been part of the redesign of, of force structure. He's been part of working through the issues to do with uh, what we're going to be buying and what the time frame is going forward. So I think he's clearly the logical person to be in charge as a CDF. So I think it's, it's a good appointment. I think, uh, again, there's always succession planning because uh, these are always fixed periods, so you've always got to got an eye to the future. And I think Richard's made some good appointments with a lot of experience. Uh, but as he's made the point, both within Defence and the armed services, they've got to work to the government's agenda. And I think uh, clearly the team that he's put in place will be uh, committed to doing that. There was a bit of criticism for Richard Miles. Michael, I don't know if you can name a defence project. Um, well, I'll just go back to since my time here in Canberra, 2011 or 2012 or so, that's been anything even vaguely approaching a budget or being on time. Well, Andrew Peacock used to tell me uh, after he finished as foreign minister, there's one thing you can be sure of is that in defence, nothing will ever be delivered on time and on budget. He was very sceptical over the years about the performance of defence. Uh, and listening to Stephen and Richard Miles and the Prime Minister this morning, it all sounded great. But if you caught Greg Sheridan's interview a few minutes ago that you did with uh, Sheridan, who is, you know, the best independent commentator in the country and has been for forever on foreign foreign policy and defence matters, um, you have a completely different look at this. Uh, I mean, you know, Sheridan says Miles has been complaining about culture, yet he he promotes the deputy. And I'm sure David Johnson's a very fine naval officer and has served with great distinction, but if you've got these long-standing internal cultural problems, you appoint the next bloke in the room uh, to take over. So it, it it doesn't quite gel. It doesn't quite gel. And uh, obviously Sheridan's concerns would be shared by many, both inside and outside the Defence Forces, um, given what Miles has said uh, since becoming uh, the minister in this field, mm. mate. Might well, just finish on Israel. How seriously, Stephen, does Israel need to take what seems to be an ebbing of support? Um, look, I don't think they care too much what Australia thinks, to be quite frank, but the US, Biden, and even Donald Trump having a bit of a warning. Yeah, look, I think Israel have unfortunately gone from a position where they were the victim of a heinous, heinous, brutal attack, uh, unprovoked, uh, and they've sought to hold to account uh, deservedly Hamas and its leadership and its uh, forces. But I don't think they've been able to define what the end game is. What is the definition of victory? Uh, pretending, uh, look, if we've got to go, we'll go along and pretend with Netanyahu that Hamas's forces have been destroyed after another month's uh, combat, then I'm all up for it. But Netanyahu is part of the problem here. He failed to deliver security for his people. He's got Israeli Defence Force lives he's losing because he couldn't do his job. Uh, and you see the hundreds of thousands of people who've been protesting about him in Tel Aviv and across the country in Israel. Uh, I think he does need to take it seriously. I think he himself has acknowledged this morning that he is actually engaged in getting reports on negotiations about a ceasefire. I don't think the Australian mm. government and Biden and the UK all saying we need there to be a recalibration of how you're going to try and achieve whatever your victory is. Uh, but if we've got to play the game and pretend that Netanyahu is out of victory here just to get rid of him, I'm up for that. Michael, we're nearly out of time. Just briefly, your thoughts on that situation? Well, victory will be the death of Yahya Sinwa, the head of uh, Hamas. Um, but uh, Israel loses their public relations war, as it always does, A, because it's very poor at public relations, and B, because there's a global rise in violent anti-Semitism uh, around the world, which is a disgusting uh, development. But, uh, no, very poor performance by the Australian government. You know, shame on Wong, shame on Albanese. 
Uh, Jeremy Corbyn must be sitting over there in London clapping away at the performance of the Australian government. Uh, you know, Israel is not a, you know, Australia is no longer a friend of the Jewish community in this country or a friend of Israel, given their behaviour, Tom. Michael Kroger, Stephen Conroy, thank you. Thanks, man. Good talk.